In this video, we're going to be working with services and dependency injection. So first off, why would we want a service? Right here, we're already getting data from a fake async service. So why would we want to have another service in between that layer? Well, really what you want to do is you want your components to be able to talk to a service. So that way that service controls all that logic of talking to maybe that external API, if you imagine that that's what we're using. The other thing you can do there is that that service can be responsible for caching or controlling app state and you don't have to manage that all over your app you can do that centrally in one service so if you want to show things from one screen to another that can just be carried over between services and we don't need to just manage that all over in every single control so let's get started and we're going to start by moving this heroes call into its own service so for the first part about making a service, we're going to create a services folder here. And then inside the services folder, we're going to start by creating an interface, iHero service. Okay, so then in this hero service, I'm just going to paste in the code snippet. We're going to use system.threading so that we can return a task of hero and we're going to include our model model so that we have this hero model and we're going to return that array that we had before so now we have our i hero service when we save this that will get heroes so the next thing we need to create is the actual hero service so at this point i'm going to paste in the code that we're going to use for the hero service we've got our usings at the top and then we have our namespace for the heroes, our tour of heroes services. And then we have our hero service that implements the I hero service that we just created. And then we're going to put this property in here for private real read only HTTP. This is so we can use dependency injection here so that when we create this instance of a hero service, we're going to receive a new HTTP client every time. So we're just going to take that client and set the proper property that we set up above in our public async get heroes that came from our interface, we're just gonna return that same thing that we had before. We've got HTTP get JSON async hero, and we're just gonna return that same sample hero data. So at this point, we should have a service that we can now use to go pull that information in in our component. If we come over to the component for heroes, the only thing we're going to have to do here is switch out this to now call that hero service. Okay, so in order to actually change this call out, the first thing we're going to have to do is actually use dependency injection just like we were doing with HTTP before. We're going to replace this call with the call to our new service, the iHero service. But I'm just going to leave client there for now. And then if I come down here, we're, we're going to call this client and get heroes. So this should all work here now. This is all the code we need, except for we want to make sure that our imports actually have this service here. Okay, so now services should be imported. And now the last thing we have to do is go into our program CS and tell our dependency injection how to actually do this. Okay, here we're just going to add on top of the builder that already exists. We're going to add a scope interface. So when this is called, it's going to pass in this iHero service and it's going to be a hero service. And then that should be everything we need there, but we just need the using. And now everything should be able to build properly. Let's give that a try here. Okay guys, sorry about that. The problem was is that we forgot to save this hero service. So I saved that and I was able to build properly. So at this point, let's run and we'll refresh here so now we're still getting data so everything's working properly but now instead of 
us calling that directly, we're now going through that hero service. So the next thing that we can do is we can create another service that talks to multiple components and we're going to do that with an iMessaging service. So at this point we're going to make a messaging service. So again we're going to go create an interface and if you want to see um, why we designed the interface we do, um, you can come out here to this um, part of the tutorial and read about how they go through the design of the interface. I'm going to go ahead and save you guys the time and we're just going to go here and create the iMessaging service. And I'm just going to dump this in here. So we're going to still use tasks, generics, but here on our interface we're going to add tasks to add, clear, and get messages. And then we're also going to do something here um, which is a little bit crazy, but this is an event and we're going to have an event handler that's going to return us a list of messages when the messages change. So I will walk through that more, but uh, first let's just create this messaging service.cs. Okay, so let's just paste the code in that we're going to look through. And here we have quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of stuff, so let's just break it down just a little bit. So we have a new class in our Two of Heroes services namespace, and it's inheriting from our iMessage service. And then we're going to have a public property here that's just going to hold the list of messages. So we're at start, we're just going to initialize this to an empty list. That way we don't have to deal with nulls in the service, um, just make our life a little bit easier. And then here we're going to define that event handler I was talking about in that interface. Uh, and again, this is just this is just like creating it so that it's there. In the next part here, um, our get method, um, this is just a simple thing where we're always going to return this messages property. So whenever this is called, we just return what's ever in our messages. This is using a lambda if you've never seen that before. But basically it's just a return messages is what we're doing there. The next piece here is this public async task. And this is using the TPL library with um, system threading tasks. So this allows that async and await. I don't think I've talked about it yet in the video, but this is normal task handling in C Sharp. And so this lets you have multiple calls happen at the same time, and C Sharp handles the waiting code where you don't have to handle those multiple threads for it. So we have a task, which basically just means this is a void. We're not returning anything. Um, normally you put a type behind that. So when we get a message in, we're going to call task.factory.startNew, which is just a way to start a brand new thread. And then we're not going to pass in any arguments, but we're going to take our messaging list, and then we're going to add the message we received. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this event here. And it set, And what this is doing is basically saying, if, if it's null, don't do this invoke but hopefully this is always set. But this just saves us, uh, the question mark there just saves us in case someone calls it and doesn't have that set, then we can be so, we can be protected in the future. We're gonna go set that in a second, but let's just see down here. We, we're gonna do the same thing, but on our clear, we're just gonna say messages.clear. So this lets us remove everything from the list. So if you, if you ignore this event handler, it's all pretty straightforward. We're, we have a new list we add messages, and we can clear the list. So there's all the basic things you need in a service so that the list handle is all handled by the list. We just call the functions and pass in what we want, and then that stays right where we want it to be so that it can be used on multiple screens. All right, so to start using this service, one of the first things we're gonna have to do is go back into our dependency injection. And then down here on this line, we're going to add a singleton service, which means that there's only one instance of them. Rather than here, we can always go get a new um, HTTP client or a new um, copy of that hero service that only talks to our API. With the iMessaging service, it keeps state. So we want that to be a singleton, so we're always calling that same one. And we're not getting different uh, versions all the way through. Since this is a client-side app, 
having the singleton service isn't that big of a deal. It's not like someone else is going to hit it from the browser and be able to get a copy of this service. It's not on the server. So there's really no problem with that being singleton here. We just have our iMessage and then our message service. So now we can start calling that from like our hero service. So here, here we have a call that gets heroes. And one thing we might want to do is when someone makes a call to this service, we want, might want to display that a call has came in on the service. All right, so to do that, the first thing we're gonna have to do is up here, we're gonna add a read-only iMessaging service. And I'm just using this to make sure that I know it's private. It's a convention that we use normally. Um, and then in here, what you're gonna have to do is, since the dependency gets injected into this constructor, you're gonna take the iMessaging service and you, we'll just call this service here. And then we're gonna set messaging service equal to service. So now, so now down here, when we get to get heroes, this is actually gonna be able to call that service. When I add this code here, this messaging service can now add this message and it's gonna call, or that message that's gonna be sent is gonna be hero service heroes fetched. So now if we display this heroes or if we make a call to this hero service and we display these messages somewhere, we should be able to see every time this heroes heroes fetched is called. Okay, from our hero service, we're going to go back into the components. We're going to go back into the hero service and at the very top, we're going to inject a messaging service. So now that we have a messaging service here, we're able to actually uh, make calls to it down here in our code. This is going to do everything we need it to do when selecting heroes. But here we have this get heroes. And we know from what we did in the messaging service that get heroes is going to make a call off to the messaging service. But it might be nice here to fire off an event when on select happens that when someone clicks on something that the messaging service will then fire off and tell us which hero is actually selected. So here we're gonna take in that hero that's passed in and then pass that name back on. But when we send that name, we gotta make sure that we change this to an async task because it can't be void now that it's async or else you'll run into issues calling uh, a task from uh, a non-task. So we're gonna do an async task here our heroes list we have a heroes detail but we're still not showing that component yet for the messaging service so let's create a component where we can actually display those messages on the screen when we go into the components folder we're going to create app messages .razor. and inside app messages .razor, i'm going to paste a bunch of code and what this is saying here is we still have to grab our service so the razor component knows what to display and that's going to be used by our code down here but all we're going to do is create a heading um, that says messages and then we're going to create a button here with a clear class that on on click we're going to call clear messages and so the button here is just going to show clear and then for each message, it's just going to dis display in its own div. So the code here, we have a we have a list of messages, and on initialize, we're going to set those messages based on our messaging service. So the first time this comes up, this should probably be nothing, but then when our component loads, it'll probably set that messaging service to heroes fetched, and then here we're we're doing this, um, I know I mentioned this earlier, but in the messaging service, we're saying on messages change invoke, and there's this event, event handler here. This is actually wiring that on messages changed event handler up. So if we didn't do this, the other call would blow up if we didn't have that question mark there. This is, this is the part where we've wired up our event handler. So we have to make sure we do that in every place or it won't really get an update from that messaging service but this allows it to work across multiple components. It doesn't just have to be in this one thing. 
if we click off to a different screen and then come back, it would still get messages from that screen as well. Here we're doing a message changed because we've wired this message changed event to this handler here. And so we have to send the sender and then the list of new messages. And then we're gonna invoke async the new messages to the message property on the other one. And then we're gonna tell Blazor that the state has changed. I'm just gonna remove that really quick. And then here, when we wanna call the clear messages, we're just gonna call await messages cleared. So when this button gets clicked, we're just gonna make sure that list is empty. So that should all work just fine. Okay, so here we're gonna have to go in to our index page. So we go into pages, index.razor, and we're just gonna place our app messages here. And I'm gonna do self-closing tag. So this should build for us. Make sure that we have everything saved. And so we have app messages under here. We have our heroes. Um, I know we did a lot of work, so let's make sure that this is running correctly. .NET build. .NET run. Shift F5. And then we have our messages showing up here with our message service. And if we click clear here, that clears the list. But when we select a new hero, we get this running list going for us. If we refresh the page, we get a new one for this session because it's a new client session. But then as we select heroes, we see those all pop up below. This is really all we need to have this service work for us. Um, it'll work across pages. I know that was a lot of information for you guys, but if you guys want to go through this service section out here, you can you can kind of go through and see what they said. It's not um, it's not super easy. It's not super clear to figure out what they were talking about. But in the next section, we're going to look at doing in-app navigation routing between pages.